Hello everyone. Today we will be learning about the four pillars of object-oriented programming. For this tutorial, we're going to be using Python. This is because the syntax is very simple and easy to understand. Make sure that you guys know some sort of programming language that supports object-oriented programming, such as Java, C Sharp, C++, and really any other language that falls under that circle. The first thing we're going to be learning about is abstraction. So abstraction is just operating something without understanding how it properly works, or know how it works. Let's suppose if I go to a lemonade stand and get some lemonade. I don't necessarily need to know how to make lemonade, I just need to order it. That's abstraction in a nutshell. Now here's a code example to improve your understanding. Alright, so let's suppose if we have a very basic class over here called lemons. Now inside of lemons we have the uh, attribute or the method called purchase, right? Now, when I purchase, all it does is it, it just gives you lemonade. Now, of course, if this was a real project, then there would be some more processing done. All right, but for the sake of this video, just go with me for a second, right? So now, in order for me to run this function, I don't need to do anything. All I have to do is just run this. I just have to go lemons.purchase, all right? And then I can just go ahead and run this, okay? And it's just going to go ahead and print out here as lemonade. And this is actually how packages work. They go over the theory of abstraction, where they, where there are different authors that write the packages, and you are just simply utilizing them for your own purpose. The second paradigm that we're going to be learning about is inheritance. Inheritance is when you have a separate class that takes properties from the first class, and has its own properties as well. Let's take the lemonade stand for example. Let's suppose that in our lemonade stand, we have a cashier, and the cashier will inherit from the lemonade property itself. So that way we can buy the lemonade at the cashier and the cashier will just grab the lemonade. This way our code is a lot more organized. Now here is the coding implementation as to what I've just done. Alright, so you guys remember this class called lemons from the previous tutorial or from the previous part of the video? Now as you can see over here we have another class called cashier and this cashier takes into the argument of lemons which is the exact same over here. As a result it inherits all the properties from lemons. So you could consider the cashier to be a child class and the lemons to be the parent class. Now while it inherits the lemons, the cashier itself can also utilize features from the lemons class such as purchase. As long as the cashier class itself does not have a purchase method. Similarly, the cashier can also use its own methods. Now if I were to go ahead and run this, you guys will be able to see this. I can call upon dot purchase and get here is lemonade, and I can go ahead and call dot total and get here is your order. So yeah, that's how inheritance works. The third concept that we're going to learn about is polymorphism. So polymorphism is the concept where a children class has the same attribute as a parent class. For example, let's take our lemonade stand for example. The uh, cashier is one class, which is the child class, and the lemons class is the parent class. Now, there are some attributes that are common between the two of them, such as there's a cost for the lemons and a cost for the cashier. The cost for the lemons could be, for example, $1 an hour, and the cost for the cashier could be $15 an hour. As a result, these methods may have the same name. As a result, when you call upon the child class, it will not go to the parent class. Instead, it will override it. And here is the coding implementation as to how this is done. All right, so let's suppose inside of our lemonade stand, there is a cost for the lemons and also a cost for the cashier. So over here, we can go ahead and make a method for the lemons first of all, and we can just call that cost. All right, and what we're gonna do over here is just print out the cost is $15. Similarly, over here, or for now, let's just go ahead and run cashier dot cost. So currently, since there's no child object it's, or child uh, function, it's going to go to the parent class and get cost from there, like so. The cost is $15. But similarly, uh, let's suppose if there is, actually let's make this $1, because that seems like a more reasonable price. But let's suppose for the cashier, the cashier has its own price as well. Now the, co now the cost for the cashier is going to be 15 bucks an hour, which is just minimum wage. The cost is $15 an hour. Okay, and now if we go ahead and run this, you're going to see that it calls upon the cost is $15 an hour. This is because the cashier itself has its own class, and as a result, it overrides the lemons class, or the lemons cost method. So all this is figured out at runtime, and it's not figured out predetermined, it's not figured out right beforehand. When the code starts running, it figures it out right there and then. Encapsulation is the fourth and final pillar of object-oriented programming. 
Encapsulation is the concept of making specific variables private and accessible for privacy purposes. For example, when taking our cashier class, let's suppose that we have some secret information such as money inside of the cash register. So by privatizing this variable, it cannot be accessed by anyone outside the class and only inside of the class. As a result, it will make our code a lot more secure and less prone for errors. Now here is the coding implementation as to what I've just done. All right, so you guys remember the cashier in the lemons class, right? Now inside of our cashier class, so just forget about lemons for now, we're gonna go ahead and, and implement some encapsulation. First thing we're gonna do is just add uh, some values that we want privatized. So to do this, we're gonna do it inside of our constructor class. Or constructor method. The constructor method allows us to, you know, create variables from the get-go. Okay, so inside of init, I'm going to go ahead and create a money value, a money variable, which is going to be equal to 500. All right, now over here, if I go ahead and call my cashier class, okay, now while I call it, I can go ahead and even access this money value, and I can go ahead and just print that out just to prove it. Cashier dot money. Okay, now if I go ahead and print this out, we can see $500. Now this data is initially supposed to be private, but what's even more dangerous is that I can modify this value, like I can add 200 to it. And now we get 700. Now what we want is for the values to be entirely silent, so that way it can only be accessed inside of this class itself. To do this, it's very simple. We're gonna wanna go ahead over here and add two underscores. All right, and now if I'm gonna go ahead and run this, it's going to lead to a huge error, all right? And even if I go ahead and just add two underscores, there's still gonna be a huge error, okay? Now you might be wondering, uh, so that's all fine and dandy, but how can I even access this value? Well, I, what I can do is, is I can go ahead and access the value inside of my total method or in my cost method, like so. I can go ahead and just print out self underscore underscore money. And now if I just go ahead and print out, or if I just go ahead and run cashier.total, I can just go, uh, oh sorry, cashier.total, I can go ahead and run this. Now as you can see, we got 500 and that's our total order. So that's how encapsulation works and those are the four pillars of object-oriented programming. Thank you guys for watching, have a nice day.